Insider, my name is Alan and welcome to Design Dummy. In this tutorial, we will be exploring version histories inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now to activate this feature, you're gonna have to be part of the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. If you're an offline user, this is not gonna really work for you, but if you still wanna explore this option and recognize how you can save your non-destructive files, then stick around and watch this video as it's gonna really help you out. So the first thing we need to do is we need to convert our offline workspace into an online workspace. And the way we can do that is by going to File, Save a Copy, and here we can name our file. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna name my file tutorial. Press the blue save button and that pretty much does it. But the only thing you need to watch out for is the fact that this current file that you're looking at is not the online file. For whatever reason, Adobe decided this is not gonna function this way. So you need to exit out of this workspace, navigate to the left of uh, your home tab here and press your files. And in here, you're gonna be able to see your Creative Cloud documents. So I can see this is the most recent file which I've saved. So I'm gonna open that up and we can verify that this is a cloud document by looking at the file name at the top and checking there is a cloud icon. And now we know for sure that we're operating in the Adobe cloud file ecosystem. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a image just for the sake of this demonstration. So I have this image of the Statue of Liber Liberty, which I found on Google, and we're gonna add it to our workspace like so. Now, the first thing we need to understand about version histories inside of Photoshop and Creative Cloud is it's not an ongoing process. It's not like uh, this is happening in the process. The way it functions is it functions on incremental saves. So anytime you override and save the document, this is when Adobe's version history is going to work. So the reason this is very useful is if you have non-destructive files, which you're working on, for example, if I take this image and I convert it and rasterize it as a layer, so now it's not a smart object, it's a rasterized layer. So, you know, anytime I want to basically, uh, you know, if I do this, I'm basically destroying the image. You know, I'm destroying the integrity of that image as opposed to perhaps using layer masks where I would be just kind of masking it. But the way we can demonstrate this version history and how it already works is I can grab the brush tool just like so, and I can start painting just like this. So I'm gonna paint uh, three white dots and then I'm gonna go to file and save. And I'm gonna continue on. So I'm just gonna paint, you know, three, three more dots just like so, and then press save once again. And then I can paint three more dots and then I can press save once again. And you get the point. The more times that I work on my document in a non-destructive manner, I'm gonna save it incrementally to help Photoshop version history remember that these are the versions and increments which I'm going through. Now, what I'm gonna do is uh, do it a few more times here and save. I'm gonna exit this document just to help Adobe save all of this in the background. I'm gonna reopen this file just like so. I'm reopening it from the cloud. Then I'm gonna to go to Window, Version History. 
And inside of this little tab here, we're going to have access to that version history. So we can see the time which these files were saved and we get a little preview window just here as well. So if we, if we click through, we can see, you know, those changes which I made over time and we can go back in time and we can recover the file which we initially worked on. Previously, this wasn't possible. The, the way that designers have usually done this uh, method is by just saving version 1, version 2, version 3. I still believe in that method because you're saving locally and you don't have to retrieve online and you don't, you don't have to have an online connection. Whereas with this method, you're bound by your internet connection. And as you scale your file, and as you build a very big and glamorous file, this version history method is going to be very tedious and actually is going to limit you as a user. So what I would say is for this to really function as it is now, only use it for light files. Unless you have an extremely fast internet connection and you also have a sense of patience, which I think a lot of designers do not have because our, our brain works so fast that in real time, we want to have that feedback. You know, we want to, we want to see and we want our brain to be connected to our design and we want to in real time interact. Any sort of friction, any sort of waiting time is going to limit our creativity and it seems like this um, kind of concept which adobe has here and the fact that it's bound by the creative cloud and it's not available for offline use just shows how much adobe wants to sell you this subscription but regardless let's just see how it all works so Let's say we want to go back to this uh, version. What we can do is uh, revert to this version or we can open in a new tab. So let's just open in a new tab and we can see we've gone back to this version. So I think there are still quite a, a few benefits to, to using this, um, but I think that pretty much summarizes how this uh, function works and I hope for some of you it's beneficial but for a lot of you old school designers out there I still recommend just you know saving your file and uh, saving it locally because that retrieval time is going to be significantly faster than you being reliant on your internet connection and working in this way. So Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.